At the time of making this video, LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga is 13 years old. I played this game when it first came out, I also played both the original LEGO Star Wars and LEGO Star Wars 2 back on my PS2 back in 05 and 06, and still to this day, 13 years later, I'm learning more and more about these games. Today I learned LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga has 39 rare hidden characters just sitting in the game files. You can't play as them in the normal game, some of them were supposed to be in the final game but were cut right before launch, and others were never supposed to be playable. But today, that all changes. Let me introduce you to the unused characters of LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. Now before you ask, no, these aren't modded characters, they're official, actually in the game. But I am using a mod created by my friend Lintoni Gamer to play as them here. Oh hey look, it's Dr. Evazan, a buzz droid, a giant moving curtain. This is gonna be fun. Hey everyone, it's Andrew. <laughs> now just before we get started, today's video is sponsored by the Ridgebot. Just like LEGO Star Wars has a bunch of unused characters, your regular everyday wallet probably has a lot of unused cards, receipts, and things you don't need just sitting in there, and that's where the Ridge Wallet comes in. Its sleek, compact design means you only carry what you need. I've been using one of these for ages now, and once I got used to it, there was really no going back. Also, these would make a great Christmas present, a gift, if you want to give one to your family or get one for yourself. Go to rich.com slash bombastic and use the code bombastic to get 10% off with free shipping, and there's details in the description. Okay, so we're going to do this alphabetically. First up, we have the 2-1-B Surgical Droid. This character is used in a cutscene at the end of Empire Strike strikes back. He's the one who gives Luke his new hand. And as you can see, he's actually animated with his own unique movements. No one else in the game moves like this. This is Anakin Jedi Scarred. This character's left over from LEGO Star Wars video game, the 2005 version, and was supposed to appear in the Darth Vader level, I think either Revenge of the Sith or the bonus, but the idea for him was eventually scrapped. It would have been cool to fight against a half-torched Anakin on Mustafar. It's like he dipped his head in the lava. This model of Darth Vader, known as Anakin Vader, was used in the Emperor Palpatine fight scene and also appeared in LEGO Star Wars video game. Next up is the Barman. He was never supposed to be playable, but you can find him behind the cantina bar. You're always grumpy. Too many droids in here, I guess. We don't serve their kind here. What? This is the LEGO Star Wars 1 battle droid prototype. He was used in early builds of the game, but was eventually replaced. Next up is the Boga this giant thing here, and I was like, huh, what's a boga? Oh wait, it's this girl right here, Obi-Wan's Utapowan Lizard. So there was originally supposed to be a level which had you chasing General Grievous, just like in the film, but this wasn't included in the final game. Hopefully we'll see the boga and the boga chase included in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Next up is the Bomar Monk. Now I'm not sure if this was going to be a playable character or something you could ride, but this spider thing here isn't actually a spider. The Bomar order was a religious order that believed in isolating themselves from physical sensation to enhance the power of their minds. So they had their brains transplanted into jars and would use droid spider walkers to get around instead. So in this jar here, this single orange Lego stud is a brain. Feeling enhanced in there? This is the Buzz Droid. Honestly, wish we got to see more of these in the movies. And I'm surprised this one's not playable. It was supposed to be, but got cut right before the game's release, and it's much bigger than I remember Buzz Droids ever being. Maybe that's why it was cut, it wasn't canon. This one's basically a bigger version with legs that uses its saw as a melee weapon, just slapping Obi-Wan around the room. And it actually goes into ball form if it gets attacked. Hey look, it's Figure and Dan from the Cantina Band, and he can actually play the bongo drums. The cantina band was never supposed to be playable, but you can actually see them in the cantina, and if you turn the game's music off... Now, you know the character I've always wanted to play as in LEGO Star Wars? Curtains! Forget about Anakin and Obi-Wan and Vader and all of the other classics, I want to play as Curtains! These are the curtains used in the Jabba's Palace intro scene, and I have no idea why they're here and why they're counted as a playable character, or why I can do this, but I can! You guys remember Dr. Evazan, right? Again, I feel like this guy should have made the final cut, responsible for getting his friend's arm chopped off by a space 
this wizard. I think he eventually sewed it back on though. This is a duvet. Again, not sure why this is counted as an unused but playable character, but here we are. And I'm assuming this was used as a prop at some point, maybe when Anakin wakes up from his nightmare and throws off the duvet. Again, no idea why I can do this, but I can. This here is the Faloom Pisset, an animal native to Naboo, and they do actually make an appearance in the Naboo level where you meet Jar Jar, but you can't ride them or play as them. Who came up with that name? Faloom Pisset. Faloom Pisset? It's a funny one. Doesn't feel like a real word. Oh wait, it's not. Next up, a character I'm super familiar with because of my adoration of Star Wars Racer. This is Gasgano. Although he's missing something I can't quite put my finger on. Apparently he also appears in a cutscene, probably in that dreaded pod racing level. Do you guys remember that general aboard the at, -AT that destroyed the rebel shield generator on Hoth? That's this guy, General Veers, and he also appears in a cutscene. In this cutscene. This is my favorite vehicle in Battlefront 2004, a Kadu. Although technically I guess you wouldn't call this space camp a vehicle, but this guy also appears in the Naboo mission and has decided to cause havoc aboard the Separatist space station to get revenge for what the droids did to the Naboo. You actually see quite a few of these on that Naboo mission. This is one of the Kamino security droids you'll have to get past on Kamino. They occupy the hallways similar to the Rebel prison in The Mandalorian, I guess. How you doing, you old pirate? Hey look, it's Lando, but wearing his General Calrissian outfit. You can't actually play as this version of Lando, you only see him wearing this in a cutscene. Pretty fly, I like like the blue pants and cape. The same goes for the Lando waistcoat appearance. These are Han's clothes. You know how at the end of Empire, Lando is wearing Han's clothes for some reason? It's really weird. Why are you wearing Han's clothes? And if you think that's weird, this next one is an early concept from Mace Windu, although using Obi-Wan's face as the base. And for some reason, there's a lightsaber inside him. But seriously, what's the deal with this face? Isn't this the face Obi-Wan makes when he sees Maul kill Qui-Gon? What joke are you devs getting up to? Oh hey look, it's Luke Skywalker's ceremony outfit. Before Battlefront 2, Lego Star Wars had it. Here's Luke wearing pajamas. Is this from when he gets his new hand? Give thanks to 2-1-B. I don't know how the modder Linturni got this one into the game, but here it is. You're looking at the magnet from the Cloud City escape level. No matter where you go, it's attached to the ceiling and once again counts as a playable character. Oh yeah, it's my boy Morhonic straight from the Moss Esper pod racing scene, three eyes means triple the advantage. This is the Lego Medic the type of medic to draw his pistol and throw bombs in your direction. Guys, how is Nyan Nub not a playable character in LEGO Star Wars? If Battlefront 2015 got just one thing right, it was this guy. Yeah. <laughs> this is Padme as a pilot, a character left over from LEGO Star Wars 1. It's not really clear why she's here or what purpose she had, but she was originally going to be playable and has some custom animations, like drawing her blaster while spinning. Now that's a good trick. Ponda Bubba is is Dr. Everson's right hand man, or should I say, no right hand man, or creature, or whatever this thing is, Aqualish. There, I looked it up. He's the guy that ends up losing his arm in the cantina to one of the galaxy's finest peacekeepers. Rebel Scum is a fan favorite character from LEGO Star Wars 1 that wasn't included in the complete saga. Now, when I first saw this guy, I was like, hi, it's George Lucas, but it's not. This character's in game name is Sansweet, meaning it's most likely Steve Sansweet. Sweet. The owner of Rancho Obi-Wan, the world's largest Star Wars museum. But why is he in the game? What's he doing here? Oh, hey, look, it's Yoda's chair. The saucer thing he sits on in the prequels. Goes from jumping off walls against Dooku to needing the future version of a mobility scooter. I wonder, did he go to the shops and like buy this thing as well? Like, did he just show up one day and be like, yeah, I need a, a hover pod for myself. I'm getting old. How is Sebulba not a playable character in Lego Star Wars? Like, what? <laughs> This is the snake from the Dagobah level. Is this the one that comes out of the swamp? The Spaceman is actually the logo Lin Tony Gamer uses for his channel. This is supposed to be a playable character, but for some reason never made the final cut because normal spacemen don't belong in Star Wars, right? Why not? According to George Lucas, I guess he's not there. You guys probably remember the Stap from the Naboo level. These ride-on bikes used by the droids. Never supposed to be playable, but here it is. All right, that's enough. Stap it. It's an old Battlefront 2 joke. This Stormtrooper here is a character from LEGO Star Wars 1, one of the original Stormtroopers. He never made the final cut. Ten Num is a Solustan B-Wing pilot from Return of the Jedi. 
Jedi. He appears in that cutscene. Didn't realize there was another num. I thought it was only nine. Now there's 10 as well. It's 10 of them. They're multiplying. WA7 is the waitress droid from Dex's Diner, another character from Lego Star Wars 1. The original hub world was Dex's Diner from Lego Star Wars 1, so that's why she was there. But not here, unfortunately. And look at this. It's Zam Wessel's droid, the one she uses to try assassinate Padme. These all together make up the 39 unplayable characters in the game, but I'd love to know if there's one character you'd love to see added to Lego Star Wars, who would it be? I'm going with the Sarlacc pit, of course. Why wouldn't I? Also, you should go check out Lin Turney Gamer's channel for lots more to do with Lego Star Wars, or you can watch one of these videos here and follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and join my Discord for updates on Skywalker Saga, Star Wars, other stuff, everything else. And I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. My name's Andrew. I'll catch you soon. <laughs> Stay bombastic.